Hello guys and welcome to my newest tutorial about Java and Swing. And in this tutorial I'll show you how to use a component called JList. Well, JList uh, is kind of similar to JCombobox. So basically you have a list of items which you can select either by clicking with uh, mouse or by using your arrow keys on a keyboard. So let's start with this uh, tutorial. I already created my class called JList Tutorial, JFrame, and called a few standard methods for JFrame. Now let's create a new instance of the JList class. So, uh, as you can see, JList is a generic class which takes, which has one type parameter. And uh, let's pass, for instance, product product as type parameter, and let's call this instance list. And let's new j list. Okay. Also, let's create the product class. So private class product, and it will have like three fields like uh, name, uh, price, big decimal, uh, price, and let's say description. Uh, disk. Okay, and now let's generate constructors by using these fields. And also let's uh, generate getters and setters. Okay. Okay, that's it. Now, the easiest way to populate and to manipulate with uh, data in your JList is by using the default list model. So similarly to JCombobox, where we used a uh, default combobox model. So I'll create my default, default uh, list model, which is also a generic class, which uh, has one per type parameter. And uh, we'll pass product to so I'll call I call it model. So let's say the new default model. Okay. Uh, let me also create a J label where I'm going to display details of my uh, product which will be obtained from J list. So let's name it label. And let's call it label. For now, it will be uh, it will it will not contain any text. Uh, also, I'll create JPanel where I'm going to add my JLabel. JPanel, okay. Uh, also, let's create a JSplit pane. So, I will add my list on the left side of split pane and panel with label on the right side of split pane, okay. So, split pane equal new JSplit pane, okay. Uh, first thing I'm going to do, I'll set a model for my list and I'll do that by calling uh, set model method from my list instance. Uh, let's pass model instance. Okay, model instance. Uh, now let's start uh, adding our components. Uh, first component I'll add is list. So I'll say split. Uh, I'll set on the left side of my split pane. So I'll call set left component method. Uh, one thing you should uh, keep in your mind is that. JList is scrollable component, so you should always, always uh, add your JList on JScroll pane before you add it on any other container. Same as for JText area or, or uh, uh, I don't know, like JTable. We'll study later. Scroll pane uh, list and. Uh, first, I will add my label on uh, panel. Label, okay. And I will add panel on the right side of my split pane. Uh, set right component, and that will be panel. Okay. And of course, I will add my split pane on. Okay, I'll add before of pack method. I will add my split pane on frame. Uh, split pane. Okay. Uh, also, I'll set few products 
on my list. So basically, I'll add some items on my list. So I'll call to add actually items or products on your list. You will call add element method from model instance. And as you can see, it, it takes product as an argument. So I'll pass new product. And here, of course, I'll pass you properties for my product. First is name, let's say like oranges. And price will be like a little bit this small, uh, 2.00. And description will be like uh, these are fresh oranges. oranges. Okay. Uh, also, let's add another one like apples. Apples. Uh, price would be like 1.5. Uh, let's say these are fresh apples. Okay. So that should be it. Let's try to run this to see whether anything happens. Okay, as you can see, our application worked. And we have some items in our JList, but as you can see, they are meaningless. So uh, this, what is displayed in a JList is basically uh, what our toString method from product class returns. So we can easily uh, fix this by overriding our toString method in product class. So I'll just override my toString method in uh, product class to return me only name of my, of my product. Okay, let's say return name. Now let's run it again. Now it will be meaningful. Okay, now that works now. Okay. Now the reasonable question you will ask after this is how to actually obtain a product uh, from my JList when I select some of items in JList. So basically what kind of event listener I should uh, add to my JList to obtain uh, my product. So the event listener we are going to use is a list selection listener. And to add a list selection listener on JList, you will first have to call uh, get selection model uh, method. And then you'll call add list selection listener method and you'll pass new list selection list. And of course this can be replaced with lambda, yeah. lambda expression where E is a list selection event. Okay, now to obtain a product from our, our J list we'll have to call get selected value uh, method and as you can see it returns product. Okay, now I'll create a new local variable. Uh, called P. Okay, and I'll set values from my product. So I'll display details of my product in J label. So I'll say label uh, set text. Uh, so I'll say name uh, plus p dot get name uh, plus I'll put these three semicolons plus p dot get uh, price to plain string uh, plus and uh, let's put these three semicolons again a uh, columns actually not semicolons p dot get uh, desk maybe. And that should be it. Now, when we select our product from JList, it should be displayed in JLib. Let's run it now. Okay, here it is. Now let me make this a bit bigger. Now, if I click on oranges, it uh, will display details of my uh, oranges product. And if I click on apples, it will display details for my apples product. Uh, also, if I use my arrow keys, everything will work as intended. So, all works fine. And as you can see, also, well, it should display, yes, it should display scroll bar because we put our JList on uh, JScroll A. 
So this is it when it comes to this tutorial. See you in my next tutorial. Bye.